This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We're glad to have each and every one of you on this cool but beautiful Sunday morning as we gather together to worship the Lord. We gather together as God's wonderful people to lift up the name of Jesus Christ, that name that's above all names. At his name every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. We gather today as God's wonderful people to fellowship one with another, to pray for one another, lift up one another, to make a difference in one another's lives. We gather to worship. Hymn number 61, Come, Thou Almighty King. This morning, as we go to the Lord in prayer, we want to continue to remember all those that are sick, those that are shut in, those that are bereaved. We ask the Lord to be with each and every one of those, continue to touch each and every family and be with them in a mighty way. Uh, I talked with my brother last night and uh, they're supposed to move him to rehab this next week, and we continue to pray for him and continue to lift him before the Lord and ask God to continue to watch over him. We continue to remember Brenda and Francis and the death of their sister Rose, whose funeral was yesterday, and we ask the Lord to continue to be with them in a mighty way. Uh, we lift up Tommy Leopard, who had surgery this week, and he's at home now. And we ask the Lord to continue to touch Tommy and to be with him. And then little Elliot's mother has COVID, and so we lift her up today. And we ask the Lord to uh, be with her and to bring her through uh, this uh, virus that's affecting so many people in so many different lives. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we come before your throne of grace this morning, Heavenly Father, we continue to pray for this nation and for all the leaders. And Heavenly Father, we pray that you might watch over this nation that you might touch our hearts 
and our lives and that we might draw closer to you. Heavenly Father, we pray this morning for all those that need your touch. Lord, we thank you so much for your goodness and for your mercy. We thank you for your love and your concern for each and every one of your precious children. Thank you for loving us and caring for us. Thank you for walking with us day by day. Thank you for giving us that assurance of eternal life. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you continue to do for each and every one of your precious children. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, who gave it all on Calvary's cross and shed his blood that our sins might be forgiven. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the hope that he gives unto each and every one of us as he gives us life and he gives it to us abundantly and he gives us that assurance of knowing that we shall live forever. Heavenly Father, we thank you for that assurance and for that blessed hope. Heavenly Father, we pray for your spirit to move within each and every one of our hearts as we are drawn closer to you and closer to one another. Heavenly Father, may we love one another and care for one another as you have loved us, as you have cared for us. Heavenly Father, we pray this morning for all those that need your touch. Heavenly Father, for those that are recovering from surgery, those that are bereaved, those that are facing surgery, those that have this terrible virus. Lord, there are so many people in so many different ways that need your touch this morning. Lord, we ask for that touch to be upon each and every one. Heavenly Father, we pray for each and every one of these precious lives that are gathered here today. Heavenly Father, you know each and every one of our hearts, and Lord, you know what each and every one of us are going through. Lord, you know our needs this morning. And Lord, we just ask that you might meet each and every need that's here this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, Thank you for the prayer that he prayed on many occasions. He taught his disciples to pray, and we pray this morning as your children. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hymn number 413, A Charge to Keep I Have.
Our Psalter reading is found on page 748. We're reading from Psalm 16 today. The Lord is my chosen portion in my cup. You hold my lot. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. Even at night, my heart instructs me. Therefore, my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body also dwells secure. You show me the path of life. announcements we continue to collect our quarters for the memorial home through the month of november and then we will take them to the nursing home so that they will be able to give them to the residents there we continue to reach out with the food bank and we continue to make a difference in the lives of those around about us Yesterday uh, afternoon, we had annual conference by the internet, and it went for two and a half hours, and we had two 15-minute breaks, and uh, they got everything done. It usually takes four days. We got it done in two hours. Nobody argued about anything, and they voted on everything as a group, and so they took one group at a time, and so within two hours we were through. So I would recommend that we just do away with a lot of things and just go to the internet and sit at home and take care of the annual conference. But they cut the budget by 2%, and so uh, hopefully we'll see a difference in the budget. Uh, we continue to do our best and try to do our part as we continue to give to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and for all your goodness. Heavenly Father, we thank you for these gifts that's been given today, that they might be used for the uplifting of your kingdom as we make a difference in the lives of those around about us as we reach out to those that are in need, to those that are hurting. And Heavenly Father, we ask that you might bless all those that have given. Heavenly Father, continue to bless each and every gift in a mighty way. Heavenly Father, we give you the praise and the glory. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you please stand for the doxology?
Matthew's Gospel, the 22nd chapter, beginning with verse 15. Then went the Pharisees and took counsel how they might entangle Jesus in his talk. And they sent out unto him their disciples with the Herodians, saying, Master, we know that thou art true and teaches the way of God in truth, neither care thou for any man, for thou regardest not the person of men. Therefore tell us, what thinketh thou? Is it lawful to give tribute unto Caesar or not? But Jesus perceived their wickedness and said, Why tempt me? You hypocrites, show me the tribute money. And they brought it unto him a penny. And he said unto them, Who is this image and superscription? They said unto him, Caesar. Then said he unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar, and unto God the things that are God. And when they had heard these words, they marveled and left him and went their way. The word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this scripture and for the message that you have given unto me as I break the bread of life and to your wonderful people. Heavenly Father, may every word that flow from my lips be pleasing unto you. And Heavenly Father, these your precious children who have come today to hear the bread of life. Heavenly Father, may their hearts and meditation there all be pleasing unto you. Heavenly Father, anoint every word that is proclaimed and every word that is received. Heavenly Father, we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I thought God had given me a tremendous talent, and he has. 
ability to be able to stand and to preach without notes. But when I watched Amy Coleman Barrett this week recite case after case after case and never had a note on a piece of paper, I thought, what a gift. What a tremendous gift. And she can touch so many lives that these young girls in the back, that there's nothing that they set their mind to that they cannot become. Because God, too, has given them the ability to do so many things. And God has given us a certain amount of ability to be able to do what he's called us to do. But I was amazed this week as she was able to answer one senator after another without even having anything before. Our subject this morning is pay your taxes and give God what is his. Pay your taxes and give God what belongs to him. As citizens of this country, we place our allegiance to this country. And in this country, we want liberty. We want freedom. And we want justice. I don't know if you heard the story, this pun story, about a husband and wife who had twin girls. And he was a patriot. He loved his country. And he wanted to name the two girls, one liberty and one justice. And the wife didn't want nothing to do with liberty and justice for those girls' names. She wanted some simple name like Mary or, or Sue or, or Jane, just a simple name. And so it went on for about two months. And finally they decided that he would name one of them and she would name the other one. And so he named his Liberty. And she named hers Elizabeth. And they were identical twins. You couldn't tell the part. And so as they grew, the teachers couldn't even tell the difference. They could go to one another's different classes and they would not know whether it was Liberty or whether it was Elizabeth. And so as they growed up, this young man began to date one of those girls. And he never could figure out whether he was dating Liberty, or whether he was dating Elizabeth. And it went on for a whole year, and he could not figure out whether he was dating Liberty or Elizabeth. And then after a year of dating them, he decided that he wanted to marry one of them. And so he went to the father, And he said, I want to marry your daughter, but I got a dilemma. I don't know which one is which. You will have to choose whether you give me liberty or Beth in this country when we place our allegiance to this country. We want liberty but sometimes we have to have death in order to get the liberty. Give me liberty or give me death. I think back sometime after I had came back from Vietnam, and someone asked me, said, Forrest, why did you join the Army when you had a draft number? And you didn't know whether or not you would be drafted or not. 
And I said to him, you know, I love this country of ours. And I want it to be free, and I want us to have liberty. And I was willing to go to Vietnam so that we might fight the enemy there rather than fight on our own land. Sometimes, folks, we have to make that decision. If we show our allegiance to our country, that we're willing to place our lives in danger, that we might have liberty, that we might have freedom, that we might have justice. Folks, when we place our allegiance to our country, we do all that we can for our country to keep it safe, to make it a light on the hill where people from all around the world wants to come and be a part of who we are. Jesus had been teaching, and then the Pharisees decided they would come to Jesus, and they would entrap him in his word. And so they came to him and said, is it lawful to pay tribute to Caesar or not? There was no way that Jesus could answer that question because it would be, if he said, answered it one way, he would have one group against him. If he asked, answered it another way, he would have another group against him. It's sort of like I'd ask Lewis, Lewis, are you still beating Peggy? If you said yes, and if you said no, it means that you used to, but you don't know more. There's no way that you could answer it. It's one of those kind of questions. So what did Jesus say? He said, you hypocrites. Why are you asking such questions? Go ahead and show me the coin that you're talking about. And so they bring him a penny with the inscription of Caesar on it. And he looks at it and he says, render unto Caesar that which is Caesar, and unto God, that which is God. When Jesus was born, Mary and Joseph went from Nazareth to Bethlehem for the census so that they could be taxed. So taxes has gone all the way back to when, at least to the time of Mary and Joseph, and four of Jesus' disciples was tax collectors. So there was a lot of taxes that was collected during that time. And as citizens of, the, of a country, and as we place our allegiance to that country, then Jesus says to us, pay your taxes. After about 50-something years, I'm still paying taxes. And I don't like to pay taxes, but if we place our allegiance to a country, then we pay taxes. On everything we make, we pay taxes. If we go to the grocery store and buy certain items, we pay taxes. If we sell a piece of property, we pay taxes. Everywhere we look, we pay taxes. I don't believe you can go to the bathroom without paying taxes. But Jesus says, if that's where your allegiance is to your country, then we pay taxes. So if you have taxes, pay your taxes. But then we are citizens of the kingdom of God. And we pay our allegiance to Jesus Christ. And when we are citizens of the kingdom of God and we pay our allegiance to Jesus Christ, then we are different. 
We are in the world, but we're not of the world. We walk in the light as he is in the light. We have fellowship one with another because the shed blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all our sin. And because we place our allegiance to Jesus Christ in the kingdom of God, we live at a higher standard than the law as we live under grace. We are the light of the world. We are the salt of the earth. We make a difference in God's kingdom because we place our allegiance to Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ comes to live and dwell in our hearts and we recognize Jesus Christ as the Son of God, that he rose the third day victorious from sin and death. We place our allegiance to him. We hear the cry of those round about us, those that are in need, those that are hurting, those that need a hand to lift them up. Jesus says, you will know my disciples by their love. We reach out in love. We give a word of hope rather than a word of despair. We allow the love of Christ to live and dwell in us so that we do not become angry and turn our hearts towards hatred. But we place our allegiance with Jesus Christ in the kingdom of God. But what happens when we place our allegiance to the world, to the country in which we live, and it comes in contrast with the kingdom of God and our allegiance to Jesus Christ. We have to make a decision and we choose to go with the kingdom of God and our allegiance to Jesus Christ. Every two to four years, we make a difference in who serves this nation of ours. And so we have to go to God's word to decide how we don't choose. On one side, you have one that is willing to murder a baby at nine months old, at nine, at, at the end of nine months. And if it comes through abortion, they say just make it ease, let it be comfortable, and then let it die. On that same side you got that says marriage between a man and a man, a woman and a woman, and a man and woman is all the same. It doesn't make any difference. On that same side you have those that want to take away our freedom of speech and also our freedom of religion. But what does the Word of God say? The Word of God says that murder is wrong. And God says marriage is between a man and a woman. And so on the other side, we have those that believe that abortion is wrong, that marriage is between a man and woman, that we should have more freedom of speech that everybody should be able to speak and that we should have our religious freedoms. 
Somebody should not be able to say, well, you can't have but 10 in church or you can't have church at all. And so we have to choose every two or every four years which way we want our country to go. And so as we place our allegiance to the kingdom of God and God and Jesus Christ, we turn to God's word and we go with God's word. And so this morning, Jesus says, give unto Caesar that which is Caesar and render unto God which is God. Pay your taxes, but also render unto God what is his. The tithes have been around since the time of Abraham as he gave his tithes to the high priests. The Jewish people were expected to give 20-something percent of their income. 10% to the priest, 10% to the upkeeping of the tabernacle, and the rest went to taking care of the poor. But as we look at the Bible, we say 10%. Most folks give about 2% of their income for the work of the kingdom of God. We go into a restaurant and used to be 10%, 15%, 20%. Now it starts with 15%, 18%, 20%. And we don't hesitate to add that to the end of the bill. But we hesitate to give God what is God. And so this morning, as people of this country, and we place our allegiance to this country, but as citizens of the kingdom of God, and we place our allegiance to Jesus Christ, when the two comes together against one another, we place our allegiance with Jesus Christ and the kingdom of God. And so this morning, check your heart and see where your allegiance is. It's fine as long as they go together, but when they come in contrast with one another, are we putting our faith and trust in the kingdom of God and in Jesus Christ? Our country depends upon us putting our faith and trust in Jesus Christ and the kingdom of God. 526... What a friend we have in Jesus. The first and last verse as we sing together.
Heavenly Father, as citizens of the kingdom of God, and our allegiance is to your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, help us to be all that you would have us to be. Let your spirit move within each and every one of us that we might follow in the footprints of our Lord and Savior, that we might make a difference in the world in which we live. We ask it in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.